my guys. Well, we're just trying to turn into a nice fall morning here in the year 2022. It is the first day of fall. It is a Thursday morning, September 22nd, 2022. Good Lord, after that blowout last night, <laughs> I see my pond is overflowing. Hallelujah. So anyway, wrapping up another summer, starting another fall as the sun comes out over these beautiful uh, leaves already turning here. Uh, not only wrapping up another summer, but of course, wrapping up another year on the planet. Good God Almighty. 63 turns of the cosmic screw. Uh, 63 years blundering and trudging and slogging through life on planet Earth in the late 20th and early 21st centuries. And I think I made it by three months. By three months, I am technically a boomer. I was born in the Eisenhower administration. <laughs> Talking about feeling old, Dwight D. Eisenhower <clears throat> was just uh, getting together his military industrial complex speech. Oh. And so, of course, this is a day of reflection for a depressed, well, for a few more weeks, manic collapsitarian to look back over the last 63 years and uh, I guess on your birthday you're supposed to be, especially as you're getting into the senior citizen golden years, sit back and reflect over the uh, the thrill of victory and the agony of defeat. Oh, the, the blessings and curses. And, uh, pleasures and regrets and disappointments over a lifetime. And but of course it is the regrets and disappointments that uh, tend to overshadow the uh, fleeting moments of pleasure and of course you know each year I on uh, my birthday I get to reflect back to my 21st birthday in my 21st birthday when I got blowjobs from three different beautiful young 20-something women. <laughs> so what has it been? 42 years, one-third, uh, two-thirds, uh, two-thirds of my life to the day have passed by uh, today, two-thirds of my life since I had blowjobs from three beautiful 20-something hotties. Yes. Talking about the fleeting pleasures, that was, that was at age 21. The 21st birthday, one of the great <coughs> days of my life. Now I have <coughs> gone through two 21-year cycles, two more 21-year cycles, and uh, my memories of fleeting pleasure have obviously turned into the uh, stab of regret 
And then, of course, as I mention every year, so what was it? Birthday 45 was my second best. So what is that? Uh, 18 years ago, <coughs> when I had a, let me figure, about 350 people for my birthday party, Burning Pig, we called it. 350 of my closest, clueless, lovable friends in Austin, Texas, turning out for that damn shindig that went on for 38 unbroken hours, finally having to kick 17 people out of my house at 10 o'clock on Sunday night. <laughs> yes. The tiny little glimpses of uh, remembered pleasures. Yeppers, and here I am sitting up in my uh, sitting up in my brand new tiny house alone on my birthday. I'm not alone, you know, waking up. My little dog, he is still in bed. Sancho is still still in bed in the tiny house. Here comes that sun. So, uh, you know, with, with, with everything I have, uh, you know, when I say I, it, it, this is true of all of us, uh, we, we all have our stories, but with everything I have gone through in my many variations and reincarnations over 63 years, at the end of the day, in the beginning of the day, in the ending of the night, and worst of all, the beginning of the evening, it is, it is the, the overriding regret that I have. And I really don't have, I, I actually think I probably have fewer total regrets than most 63 year old men with, with, with this crazy life I have led. Uh, I have learned the art of retreat. I am pretty good about uh, when something, uh, it was clearly a wrong turn correcting it, uh, which is the number one cause of regret is not mastering the art of tactical retreat called uh, knowing when to hold them, knowing when to fold them, getting the fuck out of dodge is probably been the best way I have uh, limited my regrets, but uh, of course the number one, I, I mean w w with with no second place in sight. Just like my number one best decision is getting a vasectomy with no second place in sight. My number one regret on my 63rd birthday sitting up here uh, in this beautiful new tiny house alone on my birthday is uh, I think Don Juan Matus kind of talk to Carlos Castaneda about this himself, <clears throat> so I'm in good company, <coughs> is uh, my tumultuous relationships with women, with my dear sweet, the fairer sex, uh, yes, just, uh, Which, you know, let's be honest, at every single one of my relationships with women, since I am not in a relationship with a woman and have not been, and good God, 
over 10 years, uh, they, they have all ended in failure. If a success with a member of the opposite, opposite sex is that you woke up with her or, or him, or, you know what I'm saying? Uh, if that is the definition of success, that you woke up beside the, you know, your partner in life, then that's a success, and, and if you did not, then obviously it's a failure. So uh, I, I guess I have a 100% failure rate uh, with, with women, and I am just narcissistic and self-centered enough to uh, not fully understand it. I, uh, you know, to this minute, I, I am convinced that somewhere on this planet there is a woman who wants what Ham on Little Tail has to offer. Uh, this is not that bad. Uh, there, there are a hell of a lot worse uh, <laughs> things a woman could be doing with herself and waking up in this tiny house here in paradise at Bugs in a Jar Farm. <clears throat> but once again, there is no woman waking up beside me uh, at this tiny house or any other tiny house and bugs in a jar farm. You know, it's the difference between, you know, six weeks from now, I'm going to be getting in that goddamn uh, little camper that has still never been christened. You know, I was going to, when I bought that camper close to, when was it, three years ago, saying that I was going to name the camper after the first woman I slept with in it. Well, uh, the camper still has no name. <clears throat> sure as hell has never been christened the Maggie May. So, you know, it's the difference. In six weeks, I'm going to be heading out of that goddamn camper just with this black wave of depression. The mania will end when I pull out of here facing the great adventure of the open road. Uh, all I see is six months of, of, of loneliness, boredom, darkness, and depression. And essentially homelessness. Uh, rolling around the goddamn country in my gas-sucking truck alone. You know, if... <laughs> if, if if I had a female partner, uh, you know, we would be planning our great adventure over the next six months. But uh, the, the thought of doing this again, <coughs> fucking alone, it's just like I, I'm just staring in, in, into this black abyss. The winter of my discontent, and uh, you know, just looking back over over the past week, over this crazy week, uh, did not have 350 people turning out for the uh, Doomer meetup, shall we say? A little shy of 350. Not that it was, you know, I mean, it wasn't exactly a, uh, you know, my birthday party, but you know what I'm saying. Uh, not quite 350 people. And as I mentioned yesterday, uh, one of the highlights of the, uh, of that, experience what well, was well Osama, thanks to Osama's magic brownies you, you know um, 
manifesting my Doomer Chick Forever Dulcinea out of that, you know, that plastic skeleton uh, sitting next to, uh, sitting next to a plastic skeleton fucked up out of my head on Osama's brownie. Honestly feel I, honestly believing. And I still do that that Maggie was sitting there. You know, this is how pathetic, how truly pathetic uh, I have become. Where I uh, I get fucked up on pot brownies, holding hands with a plastic skeleton, trying to manifest a a, a woman in my life. But she was there. She was there at Bugs in a Jar Farm. <clears throat> Dulcinea did appear. I know I felt those uh, those plastic bony fingers squeezing my hand. You know, just a. I mean, not even talking the pussy, just holding hands with a woman, sitting around a fire with a group of friends holding hands with I, I have not held hands with a female uh, much less kissed one much less fucked one I, I, I honestly well I guess it was the well it would have been uh, August of last year is the last time I actually held hands and, uh, and kissed a and, and kissed my Dulcinea it was 13 months ago. In 13 months, <clears throat> outside of a few hugs, I have had no physical contact with a female human being. I, as I say, other than a few hugs with my uh, lovable female friends. No physical contact. I, I, no hand holding, no kissing, no cuddling. Uh, <clears throat> and and I honestly see no hope uh, anywhere in my future that I am ever going to hold hands with a female again, m much less uh, kiss a female, much less fuck a female. I uh, see no evidence of it. And, uh, the the other, I don't know if this was the highlight or low light of the past week. So uh, Osama and Groot uh, were joining me on this. So the last day that Osama and Groot were here after the the shindig itself so uh when was it monday afternoon osama groot and i we went up to watkins glen to the yacht basin in in watkins glen for the uh you know have a couple of beers and and watch the sunset now i have actually had dates here, you know, pile of fish dates with women at, at the yacht basin. It's the obvious place to go if you live in the Finger Lakes. Uh, <clears throat> one of the obvious spots for a beer date, sunset date, you know, with someone you meet on pile of fish. So we go there, and there was this couple there. Uh, that showed up uh, to watch the sunset. <clears throat> this old man was 80 years old. He was 80 years old. The woman did not, uh, she did not tell us her age. I'm guessing she was, what do you think, Osama and Groot? I, I, we were guessing she was about 75 years old. 
and you know, nice looking. Uh, 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 you know, for if she were if she was seventy, and I think she is seventy five, a damn good looking seventy five year old woman. You, you know, she has a little bit of self respect. She hasn't fucking let herself go. Uh, you know, probably still has a BMI. Look to me, probably a BMI of about twenty two. Uh, you know, just dressed casually. Uh, she obviously dyed her hair blonde, but, uh, you know, good for her. And uh, so this couple, I mean, they were really a cute couple. They were out there, you know, at the boat dock watching the sunset. You know, just sitting there making out, well, standing there, making out like teenagers. <clears throat> I, you know, I, I'm talking uh, face sucking. I honestly do not know if, if they had just met on Pile of Fish or if they were married, if they have been married for 30 years. Um, so, of course, I... I had to uh, commend the cute couple, and this dude, you know, he let me, he let us know that he had just turned 80. He had just turned 80, and he said, I am a very lucky man. And I said, brother, I can see you are a very lucky man. Uh, he's 80 years old, uh, 17 years older than me. And he's still working his mojo. Uh, I might be misquoting Don Juan Matus, uh, you know, talking to Carlos when, when Don Juan was 82 years old. You know, something like, this is a, a paraphrasing, when they were talking about, uh, you know, relating to the opposite sex, Don Juan said to Carla, something like, <clears throat> I can turn into a crow. I can turn into a crow and fly away for three days or something like that. I, I can turn into a crow. This is Don Juan Matus, uh, you know, the master sorcerer uh, who, who taught himself to turn into a crow, maybe taught himself to defy death, but he never figured out how to have a successful relationship with a woman. It was the single biggest mystery of the universe for Don Juan Matus uh, how to get in, in a fucking relationship uh, with a woman and, uh, and keep the home fires burning. I, I do not get it. Uh, you know, I... <laughs> I, I try to blame it on my doomerism. Uh, I try to blame it on, well, the, just my lifestyle. You, you know, like that, this pile of fish date I had down in Florida uh, last year. I actually went out with that woman three times. She, she just said, dude, you're never going to find a woman with your lifestyle. If you keep up this lifestyle, uh, you know, just uprooting your life twice a year and, uh, you know, living in, a, in some little camper half your life uh, and, and then living in some little tiny house in some shack on the side of the road that uh, there is no woman uh, on the planet, uh, who you're going to convince to go along. And, it, it, you know, if that's the lifestyle you chose, I mean, not even counting the Doomer shit. That was another pile of fish data up here in Ithaca. 
on our third date, uh, she, she said, dude, if, if you ever want to find a woman, can the doomer shit, is what she told me. Can the doomer shit. So if you are a doomer with my lifestyle, you're going to be a lonely doomer. So, uh, anyway, this is what I'm thinking about uh, as I clock 63 years on this planet is just the, I, I guess I'm going to my grave uh, w without ever knowing uh, the, the scent of a woman as the movie title would say, The Scent of a Woman. Uh, it just, uh, for whatever reason, was just not meant to be. Uh, and it sucks. It fucking sucks. Looks like the rain is starting again. I thought the sun had come out. But no. The rain is cranking up again. And I need to get my camera out of the rain. If you do have a woman in your life, you know, if you do have a partner in your life, uh, get out there and enjoy your partner while you still can and uh, coffee for one there we go coffee for one I'm sure I will be eating my birthday dinner, my birthday BLT. I will be having my birthday dinner alone. I will be having the first margarita <coughs> of year 64, day one of the 64th turn. Me having my margarita alone. What a fucking life. Bye, guys.